G'day folks, how are you going? And welcome to this episode. So the question is, what comes first, the tow vehicle or the caravan? If you know what your tow capacity is of your vehicle, then you know what sort of size van you can get. Or if you know what kind of sans fan suits your needs, then you know what type of tow vehicle you need to have. It's a bit of a chicken and the egg thing. Well, I think the answer is both. I'd like to have something around three ton towing. That way if I get something at two and a half ton weight, it gives me a good safety margin to work with. Also, if I find the right van a little over two and a half ton weight, then I've still got a little bit of wriggle room to play with. I'm looking for something at least three, 3.2 litres in uh, engine size. Something that can comfortably pull a van without too much effort. The more effort it needs to drive, then the more fuel it's going to drink. And it's got to be a diesel, as diesels have a better pulling power. And out in the bush, diesel fuel is a lot easier to find. I've had a couple of Progeros and quite like them. And they come in a 3.2 litre engine, but still can only tow 2.5 tonnes. Maybe a twin cab ute might be an idea. There's a bit of room in the back if you want to carry some extra stuff. Um, yeah. Not fast of any particular brand, as long as it does the job that I need it to do. My hunt started on the internet. Because almost all car yards put their cars online, a good place to start is something like carsales.com. I've used this website a number of times and have found it to work quite well. You just enter the details of what you're looking for and it will narrow the search down. Once you've got a short list, do the research to find out what people think of that particular car. The advantage of getting a second-hand car is that if there's any bugs, they've already worked them all out. Then you can hit the road and start looking for the cars. This will save you heaps of time and fuel. Doing a run to the car yards on a Sunday when everything is closed means you can have a good, slow look around without that feeling of eyes burning a hole in the back of your neck. You can have a good look inside all the different brands and models to see what they got that you might like. For me, if I'm going to get a twin cab ute, then having enough space for the passengers in the rear seat is a must. Some have a very pokey spot a six year old would have trouble fitting in. After looking around, I found a potential vehicle about three kilometres from where I live. Starting with a van, think about what you want to do with it and what you want in it. Is it going to be one of them on-road vans or an off-road van? In my case, my first van was one of them silly wind-up things and I hated it. The thing leaked when it rained and you had to pack it up wet. Next up came a 20-foot Franklin. It was a great van over the years. It was a 76, 1976 Franklin with some bunks at the end for the kids when they were younger. We took it to Queensland in 2003 and I've got to say, if you ever wanted your family to get to know each other, jam them in a van for six weeks and drive across Australia. They'll either be the best of friends or they're going to kill each other. Luckily for me, the family got on really well and I can highly recommend it to anyone to take your family on the road. But the old girl, her time's up now and uh, she's gone down to a farm south of Perth where she's going to spend the rest of her time as an on-site van. So using that history, I have a plan of what I'm looking for. So for me, I like my comfort. So I know it's not going to be some pokey little thing. Ultimately, I want something that I can take around Australia. I'll be mostly on made roads, but with some dirt roads included. I'm not looking to do any heavy four-wheel driving work with it, like the Gib River Road. Although I'd like to do that one day, I wouldn't be doing it with a van. So I'll need something well made and dust proof. Even a semi-off-road could be a possibility. Tandem axle definitely, for the better road handling. Although manoeuvring for some people in a caravan park could be a little bit more difficult, but I know it's not going to be a problem for me. I'm parking it in a shed, so size is an issue. Although I'm looking at around 20 foot, I can go as far as probably 23 foot, 
with a maximum height of 3 metres. But keep in mind that the longer the vehicle you have, the heavier it's going to be. I want a double bed, not singles, full size fridge freezer and full ensuite, including a washing machine. Self-contained battery power with solar panels is a big plus. The overall weight needs to be ideally maxed out at around 2.5 tonnes. But don't forget to be a little bit flexible. Now we're going to go looking for a caravan. As I said, I had a couple of vans in the past, so I've got a fairly good idea of what I want. So finding a van is basically the same process that I use to find a tow vehicle. Websites I found useful were caravan companies themselves like Abba Caravans, Mandra RV, Caravan Land, George Day and Caravan Camping Sales. Now remember I'm in WA but there are heaps of sites around the rest of the country that you could use from your own state. Once I got a short list it was time to hit the road again. And a bonus was that Manja RV have a side gate that opens on weekends so you can go in and have a look around the outside of the vans with full details of the van posted in the windows. Then come back later if you see anything of interest. We found a van not in one of the caravan yards we had listed but in another one we were driving by. We just dropped in. Well that's it for now. In the next episode we'll have a look around the new acquisitions and see what work might need to be done. So till next time, happy travels!